Hello students, welcome to the Indian Council of Medical Research Online Prescribing Skills Course 2020 for Indian Medical Graduates. I am Dr. Chetna Desai, Professor and Head, Department of Pharmacology, BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad. And I will be talking about basic aspects of adverse drug reactions. After completing this video, please answer the 5 multiple choice questions that have been provided in the assignment section of this module. This module on basic aspects of adverse drug reactions has been prepared by the ICMR RUM Center, BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad by myself and my co-authors Dr. Prakruti Patel and Dr. Bhagirat Solanki from the same institution. The reviewers of this module are Dr. Suparna Chatterjee from IPGMER, Kolkata and Dr. Dennis Xavier, St. John's Medical College, Bangalore. This module 1 on adverse drug reaction is one of the 3 modules developed to give you a better understanding of the importance of adverse drug reactions in management of patients. These modules will help you understand how to minimize adverse drug reactions, to recognize ADRs when they do occur and contribute to improved medicine safety by reporting the ADRs to the pharmacovigilance program of India using the suspected ADE reporting form. At the end of this module, the learner shall be able to define an adverse drug reaction and its impact on public health, understand why medicines have both beneficial and adverse effects, understand the principles of assessing medicines as a possible cause of new symptoms and signs, identify important risk factors for causation of ADRs and their influence on prescribing decisions, understand the consequences of prescribing errors in causation of ADRs, prescribe rationally to minimize ADRs due to drug drug or drug food interactions and medication errors. An adverse drug reaction is an unwanted undesirable effect of a medicine that occurs during treatment. ADRs can adversely affect a patient's quality of life often causing considerable mortality and morbidity. Around 5 percent of all hospital admissions are the result of an ADR and around 10 to 20 percent of inpatients will have at least one ADR during their hospital stay. So, as discussed earlier, an ADR is noxious. It is unintended that is when the patient was being prescribed medicine, the intention was not to generate any other new symptoms or signs and it occurs at doses that are normally used for therapeutics. There is another definition known as a side effect which is an unintended effect which may or may not be noxious of a pharmaceutical product that occurs at doses normally used but it is related to the pharmacological properties of the drug. An adverse event or experience is any untoward medical occurrence during treatment with a medicine, but which does not necessarily have a causal relationship with the medicine. Now, let us try to understand the adverse reactions and their impact on therapy through a few case studies. This is a case of a 40 year old female patient who is diagnosed with malaria due to PYVX. She has been prescribed tablet chloroquine and tablet ibuprofen 400 milligrams for fever. She is advised to take the medicines for 3 days. However, on day 2 of drug treatment, she returns to your clinic saying that she will not be able to continue the medicines. She reports nausea and vomiting after she began her medicines. There is no other apparent cause of her complaints on examination. This case illustrates the fact that an adverse drug reaction can affect compliance to therapy. Medicines are used for various purposes. Once in the body, they do not remain confined to their site of action, but will affect other parts of the body as well. Effect and adverse effect therefore, are two aspects of any medicine. An ADR can cause significant harm to the patient that can affect compliance to therapy as we have discussed before. Not all ADRs are dangerous or life threatening. Nonetheless, the outcomes and consequences of ADRs in terms of patient outcomes, cost of therapy, compliance to treatment and overall impact on healthcare system are significant enough to warrant a deep understanding of the drug and its adverse effects. ADRs as mentioned earlier cause 7 percent of acute hospital admissions and are a frequent reason for outpatient consultations as well. Therefore, an ADR 
must be a differential diagnosis for any symptom or illness that has occurred while a patient is on any medicines. Most adverse drug reactions are relatively mild, many disappear when the drug is stopped or the dose is changed. Some gradually subside as the body adapts to the ADR or the drug. Other ADRs are more serious and last longer. It is therefore important to know the likelihood of the occurrence of an ADR of a prescribed drug. These can include common as well as less common yet serious and potentially life threatening ADRs. The incident and risk quantification of ADRs, a drug may cause multiple ADRs with varying frequency. For example, chloroquine may frequently cause nausea and vomiting, however it has certain other adverse effects like hepatotoxicity or retinopathy which occur with a lesser frequency. Knowledge of frequency and occurrence of ADR of commonly used drugs will help prevent the ADRs. The ADRs are quantified based on how frequently they occur in the patients. So, the risk descriptors vary from very common to very rare depending on uh, how often they occur. Like for example, the very common ADRs would be occurring in 1 in 10 patients to the very rare ones which will occur in 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 1 lakh patients. There are several types of ADRs defined as type A to F. However, in this module we will primarily talk about two types of ADR that is type A and type B. The type A reactions are augmented and dose dependent while the type B reactions also known as the bizarre reactions or idiosyncratic reactions. Now, let us try to understand these common types with the help of a case study. A patient who was diagnosed to have blood pressure of 150 by 84 millimeters of mercury was prescribed tablet amlodipine, we know it is a calcium channel blocker 5 milligrams once a day and tablet chlorthalidone which is a diuretic 25 milligrams once a day. A few days later the patient reported with complaints of dizziness recorded as 88 by 54 millimeters of mercury. Here the hypotension that occurred in the patient is an exaggeration of therapeutic response. This is an example of dose related adverse effect. Insulin induced hypoglycemia is yet another example of type A or augmented ADR. Augmented adverse drug reactions are predictable and hence are easier to manage. They usually reverse when the offending drug is withdrawn or the dose is reduced. Mostly these reactions are not serious, but that is not always true. A very common drug used in hospital setting is heparin and warfarin. And if the doses of these drugs are not properly titrated, a life threatening bleeding can occur which requires immediate intervention. Other examples of type A adverse drug reactions are hypokalemia with furosemide and so on and so forth. Type B reactions are bizarre or unpredictable. These ADRs are difficult to prevent. However, a careful drug history can help prevent them to some extent. Usually these reactions may vary from a mild rash to more severe types of reactions like the Steven Johnson syndrome. Fortunately, they are less common but however more difficult to manage with significant morbidity and mortality. Hypersensitivity reactions to sulfonamides, to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, to penicillins, these are the common types of adverse drug reactions of type B that are encountered in clinical practice. Hypersensitivity reactions with sulfonamides, penicillins and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are a few examples of type B reactions encountered in clinical practice. Adverse drug reactions are graded according to severity as follows. Mild reactions are those where there is an awareness of signs and symptoms, but these are easily tolerated and these are of minor irritant type causing no loss of time from normal activities. Hence, they do not require any therapy or medical evaluation and the symptoms and signs that are occurring are usually transient in nature. Moderately severe areas introduce a low level of inconvenience or concern and may interfere with daily activities. But these are usually improved by simple therapeutic measures. Moderate experiences may cause some interference with functioning. On the other hand, severe ADRs usually interrupt the patient's normal activities and generally require symptomatic drug therapy or other treatment and they are usually incapacitating. More often than not, they may require stopping of drug. So why must healthcare professionals be concerned about adverse drug reactions? 
Adverse drug reactions have been known to affect the patient compliance to treatment as we have seen in the previous case study. There are also a reason for increased hospital admissions and OPD consultations. Management of adverse drug reactions increase the cost of therapy. They also complicate drug therapy because of the dosage adjustments required, withdrawal of drug therapy that may be required in some cases as well as the necessity to add other drugs to manage these adverse drug reactions. Hence, adverse drug reactions affect patient outcomes and contribute to mortality and morbidity in patients. And occurrence of ADRs raises concerns in prescribers who will then tend to prescribe lesser medicines or avoid certain medicines altogether. No medicine is completely safe. Hence, all factors must be considered before prescribing since the risk of an ADR is more often due to patient specific risk factors such as age, kidney function, liver function, another medication that interacts with the medicine, a comorbid condition, etc. Hence, the prescribers need to weigh the risk versus benefit of drug treatment, this being judgment based on the balance of therapeutic benefit versus adverse reaction for a patient by the prescriber. A knowledge of risk factors associated with adverse drug reactions can help prevent the adverse drug reactions. The risk factors are classified as modifiable and non-modifiable. The modifiable risk factors include the drug-drug and drug-food interactions and medication errors, while the non-modifiable risk factors include age, gender, species and race, genetics, pathological states and pregnancy. Please refer to the reference reading material for further details on these risk factors. Let us understand these risk factors a little more in depth with the help of a few case studies. This is a case of a 50 year old male patient who was diagnosed with amoebic liver abscess and was prescribed tablet metronidazole. Within a few hours of taking metronidazole, the patient came to the emergency with complaints of nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps and difficulty in breathing. His relatives later mentioned that the patient is a chronic alcoholic. So, what went wrong in this patient? In this case, the patient was a chronic alcoholic and metronidazole is known to cause disulfiram like reactions, especially in those patients who take alcohol. Thus, this case is a typical case of alcohol drug interaction. This near fatal reaction could be avoided by avoiding alcohol. This case highlights the importance of writing the precautions to the patients and also the importance of a detailed case history of the patient. Let us have a look at another case. A 40 year old female patient newly diagnosed with hypothyroidism was prescribed tablet levothyroxine. Here the patient is advised to avoid cabbage, spinach, broccoli and cauliflower. These are the foods which are goitrogens. They decrease the uptake of iodine by the thyroid gland and hence should be avoided in patients with hypothyroidism. So, this is an example of a case where an adequate precaution has been taken while prescribing to prevent a possible adverse drug reaction. That brings us to an important risk factor for adverse drug reactions that is drug drug and drug food interactions. Administration of two or more drugs may lead to interactions leading to alteration of therapeutic response or unwanted effects. In fact, Drug drug interactions contribute to 20 to 30 percent of incidence of ADRs, which may increase the chance of hospital admission or lengthen the hospital stay. Similarly, there are certain foods also which interact with drugs and alter the therapeutic response or cause ADRs. So, why is it important to study the drug drug and drug food interactions? Drug drug interactions contribute to 20 to 30 percent of adverse drug reactions, which may increase the chance of hospital admission or lengthen the hospital stay. The occurrence of drug drug interactions increase from 40 percent in prescriptions with 5 drugs to 80 percent in prescriptions with 7 drugs or more, which means that lesser the number of drugs prescribed, lesser are the chances of developing drug drug interactions. These are a few examples of drug drug interactions and the management of drug drug interactions varies from the individual drugs involved as well as the severity of the drug drug interaction. So, sometimes we need to avoid the drug combination altogether like in case of oral contraceptive pills and rifampicin when given together. Rifampicin has been known to induce the metabolism of oral contraceptive pills and cause contraceptive failure. Hence, this combination must never be these two medicines should never be given together. 
Sometimes you are required to consider modification in therapy as in the case of co-administration of phenytoin and rifampicin. In other cases you may just be required to monitor the therapy and intervene only if the drug drug interaction becomes clinically significant like in case of warfarin and low dose aspirin. Let us look at a few more examples. A 32 year old male complained of acute anxiety and palpitations. He had a very important meeting in the day. ECG was normal except showing the presence of tachycardia. He was prescribed tablet propranolol to be taken before going to the meeting for the performance anxiety that he was experiencing. On the same night, the patient came to emergency with complaints of difficulty in breathing. On detailed questioning, the patient was found to be a known case of bronchial asthma. This is an example of a medication error and a preventable ADR. Here, propranolol is a non-selective beta blocker and non-selective beta blockers have an effect on bronchoconstriction and are therefore contraindicated in patients with asthma. It is due to this reason the patient in this case complain of difficulty in breathing. This example highlights the importance of a detailed history of the illness of the patient. Now what are medication errors? Medication errors are any preventable event that may cause or lead to inappropriate medication use or patient harm while the medication is in the control of the healthcare professional, patient or consumer. Medication errors are common in hospitalized patients and Pediatric populations are the most vulnerable for medication errors. Various types of medication error can occur. Errors may occur while choosing a medicine which may be a consequence of irrational, inappropriate and ineffective prescribing, under prescribing and over prescribing. Errors may occur while writing a prescription. These are known as prescription errors including illegibility, dismissing the use of capital letters not writing the full form of units for example writing IU instead of international units, incorrect use of decimal points that is why it is recommended that medicines which have similar sounding names should be written in capital letters. Also if the handwriting of the prescriber is not neat or illegible it is always recommended that we write the prescriptions in capital letters or use computerized prescriptions. Errors may also occur in dispensing the formulation resulting in wrong dose, wrong formulation or wrong labeling of the dispensed medicine. Errors in administering or taking the drug will also result in wrong dose, wrong route of administration, wrong frequency and wrong duration of administration. And last but not the least are the errors in monitoring therapy where the prescriber fails to alter the therapy when required or makes erroneous alterations. Let us see a few examples. This is a case of a 35 year old male patient who presented to the OPD with complaints of rhinorrhea sneezing since past 24 hours. Patient was prescribed tablet chlorpheniramine malleate. However, the prescription was illegible with the tablet chlorpheniramine malleate written as tablet chlorpromazine. The dose of the medicine was also not mentioned in the prescription. Four days later, the patient presented with complaints of facial twitching. The patient's medication was reviewed and the error in prescribing was found that is the patient was taking chlorpromazine instead of tablet chlorpheniramine because of this prescription error. So how could this ADR be prevented? So chlorpromazine is an antipsychotic drug which causes dystonic reactions like facial twitching. The patient was taking chlorpromazine instead of chlorpheniramine and hence the adverse effects of facial twitching occurred in the patient. This is a case of a dispensing error as well as a prescribing error due to illegible handwriting. Hence the prescriber should be particularly careful while writing look alike and sound alike medicines also known as LASA medicines. In the year 1999, the Institute of Medicine USA released a study report to err is human building a safer health system. It revealed that 44,000 to 98,000 people die annually in the United States of America from medical errors. Out of them, about 7,000 deaths are attributable to sloppy handwriting. In UK, about 30,000 British die every year due to medication errors. 
This is a case of a 29 year old male patient who came to the OPD with swollen joints of hands since 7 days. The ESR and CRP were markedly raised and the RA factor was also very high. The patient was diagnosed to be suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. He was prescribed tablet naproxen 500 mg BD, tablet pantoprazole 40 mg OD and tablet methotrexate 15 mg once a day with tablet ondansetron sublingual 4 mg before taking methotrexate. Tablet folic acid 5 mg once daily was also prescribed. The patient came to the OPD 3 months later with a history of black stools and widespread oral ulceration and alopecia. The doctor asked the patient how are you taking the drugs and he said that he took methotrexate daily instead of once a week. This is an example of an administration error. While prescribing such drugs like methotrexate, it is better to ensure whether the patient has understood the instructions well in order to avoid such medication errors and the subsequent adverse drug reactions. Hence, what are the take home messages from this module? Prescribing any medicine could be associated with adverse drug reactions. Adverse drug reaction are an important differential diagnosis for any new symptom or sign that occurs during treatment with medicines. ADRs may be predictable or unpredictable and majority of them are preventable. An awareness of the risk factors help prevent or minimize the ADRs. Drug 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 food interactions may also contribute to adverse drug reactions. And lastly, but not the least, medication errors and polypharmacy are important risk factors for occurrence of ADRs, a knowledge of which is therefore necessary for rational prescribing. At the end of this module, we have provided additional cases and examples for your reference material and for self-study. We hope you find them useful. These are some references that you could use for an in-depth reading on this topic. We acknowledge with thanks the valuable inputs we received from RUMC committee of BJ Medical College Ahmedabad in preparing this module. We also acknowledge the assistance provided by Dr. Sukant Pandit and Dr. Vidhi Parekh, postgraduate students in Department of Pharmacology, BJ Medical College Ahmedabad. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you are now ready for attempting the MCQs. Please access the MCQs in the assignment section and submit the answers. Please also submit the prescription evaluation as per the tutorial which I hope you have already seen. Thank you and happy learning.